This presentation provides an overview of standard prenatal genetic testing options. All women in pregnancy will be offered some genetic testing. No one has to do any. The purpose of this presentation is to provide basic information about testing in an effort to help you decide which testing you may want to have in your pregnancy, if any. There are additional resources listed at the end of this presentation that provide more detailed information about the various genetic conditions and testing. Congratulations on your pregnancy! While most pregnancies are uncomplicated and result in babies without any of the conditions discussed in this presentation, a small number of pregnancies will be identified with some concerns. While these concerns are being reviewed, it's natural that some parents may begin to feel a little anxious about the possibility of their babies having one of these conditions. Please keep in mind the chance for any of these conditions is generally very small for most people. The results you receive from prenatal genetic testing are generally just for your information. As you learn about the testing options, consider if it's information you'd like to know about your baby during your pregnancy and if you would do anything differently if you learned your baby had a change in physical or mental development, a genetic condition, or would not be expected to survive. In most cases, your OB provider does not need these test results. You will receive the highest level of care regardless of whether or not you choose to have any genetic testing. Results of genetic testing rarely change prenatal care significantly beyond changes that are made due to concerns found by ultrasound. Your OB provider will let you know when results of genetic testing are necessary to determine appropriate care for your pregnancy. Additional information about a baby's possible or confirmed genetic condition may be welcomed by some people, while the same information may be overwhelming and unwanted by others. Consider if you are a person who does not like surprises and would prefer to know the baby would have a genetic condition before delivery. This may allow some parents to begin to emotionally adjust to the new diagnosis. Some families will choose to learn more about the condition and get support from healthcare providers or other support organizations. Testing may help others to plan in advance by choosing appropriate childcare or making any other necessary arrangements in advance for a child who is expected to have special needs. Some parents may consider not continuing a pregnancy if a child is not expected to survive or would have what they'd consider to be a disability. Others may not end a pregnancy for any reason, but may still want the information. Prenatal genetic testing includes both screening and diagnostic testing options. Screening, such as blood tests or ultrasound, can be performed to attempt to identify areas of concern for which additional testing or evaluations can be offered. Diagnostic procedures, such as amniocentesis or chorionic villa sampling, can be performed to give more definitive and comprehensive information, but also cause small risks to the pregnancy. A blood test can also be performed for the baby after birth to provide the same information as diagnostic testing during pregnancy. Screening in pregnancy will be reviewed first. Screening for some genetic conditions, such as Down syndrome, trisomy 18, or open spina bifida are available through a blood test. Down syndrome and trisomy 18 are chromosome conditions caused by an individual having an extra piece of genetic material that can cause a wide range of changes in physical and mental development. These conditions occur for parents of all ages and backgrounds, but the chances for these conditions to occur increase with age. Spina bifida is one of the most common physical changes in development during pregnancy. Open spina bifida is a change in the development of the spine early in pregnancy that can also have a wide range of effects, but most often can affect a child's ability to walk on his or her own and bowel and bladder function. The chance for this condition to occur does not increase with age, but may be increased for several reasons, including a mother having insulin-dependent diabetes, or if a relative has spina bifida. Screening for these conditions can be done through a single or two-part blood test. These tests measure proteins and hormones in a mother's blood to provide an educated guess about the baby's chance to have Down syndrome, trisomy 18, or open spina bifida. It cannot determine with certainty if a baby has any of these conditions. Results are provided in the form of a probability, 
giving the chances of the pregnancy being affected by any of these conditions. Test results combine a woman's chance for a chromosome condition based on her age together with blood test levels. The standard testing for women of any age with twin pregnancies is also traditional serum screening. Because blood test measures proteins and hormones of each twin, it's less effective than testing of a single pregnancy. Labs will provide results for Down syndrome and open spina bifida. However, this testing does not provide information about the chance for trisomy 18 for twins. To improve this screening as much as possible, women with twins who want serum screening are recommended to have nuchal translucency ultrasound performed between 11 to 13 weeks in pregnancy. Measuring the amount of fluid behind each baby's neck and looking at the baby's nasal bones through an early ultrasound adds additional helpful information to improve integrated screen for twins. If a pregnancy starts as twins, but one twin is miscarried, we recommend waiting four weeks from the time of the loss before having blood drawn. For higher order multiples, such as triplets, no blood test screening is available at this time. Ultrasound in the second trimester is the best opportunity to look for physical changes related to identifiable genetic conditions or other anomalies. If a traditional maternal serum screen identifies a concern, it is referred to as a screen positive. A result is flagged positive if the chance for Down syndrome is at least 1 in 270, which is less than 1% chance the baby has Down syndrome. If the chance for trisomy 18 is at least 1 in 100, which is about 1% chance, or the alpha feta protein level is at least two and a half times what is expected for open spina bifida. Different cutoffs are used for twins or if a pregnant woman has insulin dependent diabetes. A screen positive result indicates there's a reason to look more closely in the pregnancy for a condition of concern. An ultrasound by a maternal fetal medicine specialist would be recommended. A positive screen is also intended to be a, re a reason for a patient to consider further testing such as amniocentesis or cell-free DNA non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT, which will be reviewed in more detail later in this presentation. A screen positive may be a true positive in which the baby is confirmed to be affected with the condition. However, positive serum screens are most often false positive results in which the baby will be confirmed not to have the condition. A woman with a one in 10 chance that her baby has Down syndrome has a 90% chance that her baby does not have Down syndrome. A 1 in 270 chance still means there's a 99% chance the baby does not have Down syndrome. False positive results may be caused by wrong information being used to calculate the result, such as a woman's age or due date. It may be triggered by a different genetic condition, or it may be part of normal variation in which the baby is not expected to have any health problems as a result. Non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT, through testing of cell-free DNA is another blood test screen for Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, and sex chromosome conditions. The sex chromosomes, X and Y, determine an individual sex as male or female. An extra or missing sex chromosome may cause changes in physical development and or lead to developmental delay and learning disabilities. NIPT is the first DNA-based test of its kind. It measures fragments of DNA together from the mother in pregnancy to determine if there are extra or missing fragments of genetic information called chromosomes. Results will indicate if aneuploidy, such as Down syndrome, is detected, suspected, or not detected. Results may also be categorized as high risk or low risk. Unlike traditional serum screening, NIPT is expected to have a very low chance for a false positive result. In most cases, if NIPT identifies a pregnancy to be affected by aneuploidy, such as Down syndrome, the baby is expected to later be confirmed to have this condition, 99% of the time. However, since a false positive result is possible, following a positive NIPT result, further testing is recommended by either amniocentesis during pregnancy or a blood test after the baby is born. NIPT has been determined to be effective for women who are at least age 35 by her due date, 
who've had a previous pregnancy affected with a trisomy, who've had an increased chance for the condition determined by integrated or quad serum screening, or who have had ultrasound findings concerning for one of these conditions. Like traditional serum screening, NIPT cannot determine for sure if a baby has one of these chromosome conditions. Additional diagnostic testing would be needed to know for sure. NIPT is not recommended for multiple gestations at this time. NIPT can be drawn at, by at least 10 weeks in pregnancy and should be able to be ordered by most regular OB providers. Results should be available within about two weeks. There's a small chance there will not be enough fetal cells in mom's blood or that a problem may occur with the test equipment and a report will be issued indicating testing cannot be performed. A second attempt at NIPT may be offered in most cases or patients may consider diagnostic testing such as amniocentesis. Parents may choose to have the fetal sex reported or not find out if the baby is a boy or girl. If parents choose to get this information, they may also choose if they want to know if the baby has a sex chromosome condition, such as Turner or Kleinfelter syndromes, or not. NIPT does not test for open spina bifida, so a separate blood test just for this condition may be coordinated in the second trimester. Ultrasound in the second trimester also provides information that may raise concerns about a possible genetic condition, heart problem, spina bifida, cleft lip, or kidney problems. This assessment is typically performed between 18 to 22 weeks in pregnancy. Most women who will be at least age 35 by their due date, or for other high-risk indications, will be referred to a maternal fetal medicine specialist in a high-risk OB center to have this ultrasound and the opportunity for further testing. Babies with Down syndrome have been noted to have several things that appear physically different by ultrasound. Some of these are also relatively common in many babies, including those who do not have Down syndrome. Blood test screening, such as traditional serum screening, or NIPT, can help interpret how likely the finding may be related to Down syndrome instead of just being a random finding, which can be just like a false positive screen. In contrast to blood test screening and ultrasound, diagnostic testing can identify many genetic conditions, including Down syndrome, with a high degree of certainty. Prenatal diagnosis provides a way to get cells from the placenta or amniotic fluid during pregnancy to look at cells from the pregnancy. By looking at many different cells, chromosome analysis can determine with 99.9% .9 accuracy if the pregnancy is affected with Down syndrome, trisomy 18 or 13, sex chromosome conditions, or other large deletions, duplications, or obvious rearrangements. It does not look at any single genes as part of routine testing and may miss very small changes. Additional testing may be offered based on family history or ultrasound findings. Diagnostic procedures include chorionic villa sampling, also called CVS, and amniocentesis. These procedures are most often performed by high-risk OB providers, known as maternal fetal medicine specialists. Ultrasound is used to guide both procedures. CVS involves looking to see where the placenta implanted in the uterus and how the doctor can best get to it with a very small tube called a catheter, inserted either abdominally or vaginally as pictured. A very small piece of tissue is removed from the placenta. Amniocentesis is done by inserting a needle through a mother's abdomen into the uterus and amniotic sac into an area of amniotic fluid away from the baby. A few tubes of amniotic fluid are then withdrawn. One of the biggest differences between CVS and amniocentesis is the timing of when they're performed. CVS is performed in the first trimester usually between 10 to 13 weeks in pregnancy. Amniocentesis is performed in the second trimester, most often between 16 to 24 weeks in pregnancy. Amniocentesis can test further for spina bifida where CVS does not. Both procedures provide a picture of chromosomes in the pregnancy. Both can be used to perform additional single gene DNA testing 
if a genetic condition is known in the family and testing is specifically ordered for that additional condition. Both procedures have a small risk of miscarriage due to possible complications, like infection or amniotic fluid leakage. About 1 in 300 to 1 in 500 women who have a CVS or amniocentesis will have a miscarriage caused by having one of these procedures. CVS can be a more complicated procedure since cells may not be able to be obtained, may take longer to grow, or may show a mixed result called mosaicism. Women who choose to have one of these procedures should meet with a genetic counselor or high-risk OB doctor to discuss these procedures in more detail. Your thoughts about testing in pregnancy may change as you go through your pregnancy or perhaps from when you, before you became pregnant, depending on many influences, including discussion with your OB provider, friends, family, and what you hear on the radio or see, see on television or after getting test results. For the various reasons I described earlier, some women feel strongly they want to have comprehensive genetic testing in their pregnancies and choose to have CVS or amniocentesis performed without other screening. Other women feel strongly they would not consider having CVS or amniocentesis performed and are not interested in the information provided by screening, so they decline all of these testing options. Many women prefer to start with the available screening tests and may later consider amniocentesis if prenatal screening identifies any concerns. After reviewing details of the conditions and prenatal genetic tests that is currently available, please consider which of these approaches you prefer for your current pregnancy. Most prenatal screening will be coordinated for you by your regular OB provider, usually at your new OB appointment in the first trimester. Your OB provider can also enter a consultation for request for you to be seen by a maternal fetal medicine specialist or genetic counselor if you have a family history of a congenital anomaly or con genetic condition, or if you're recommended to have a level 2 ultrasound for any high-risk indication. If you are not familiar with any of the conditions discussed in this presentation, please use the following links to learn more about these conditions before you make your decision about prenatal testing. You can always ask your obstetrician for more information or any questions you may have. You may also request to speak with a genetic counselor about any of this testing or if you have concerns about a genetic condition in your family. You can find a genetic counselor or learn more about genetic counseling through the National Society of Genetic Counselors website at nsgc.org. Medline Plus and the March of Dimes websites are great resources for general information. The Association for, Association for X and Y Variations provides information about sex chromosome conditions such as Klinefelter syndrome, trisomy X, and Jacobs syndrome. The National Down Syndrome Society is one of the many great websites to learn more about Down syndrome or to get involved in this active community. These first three links provide information and resources for their respective conditions. The links listed below, non-invasive prenatal testing, correspond to the different labs in the United States that offer this testing and provide additional information regarding how each differs. Congratulations again and best, best wishes for you and your pregnancy.